This is Marcus Hollinger, and this is the 116 Live Show on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM Channel 154. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the 116 Life. My name is Marcus. I'm one of your hosts, and I'm here with my homeboy, Ace Harris. And again, this is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM Channel 154. And today is a very special day. Hmm. Ace. What's up, man? Would you like to... So, um, yeah, this this is definitely like, you know, a special episode. We, we uh, you know, got, you know, been walking with you behind the scenes on a lot of this for a minute. But essentially, um, this will be Marcus's last taping as a Reach Records employee because he's moving on to other things, which is kind of sad to say. But also, I feel a lot of joy in knowing that, you know, you're leaving like it's like we're sending you out versus you dipping out. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, Ace. I mean, you said it, and for for everyone who's listening, and for those who have journeyed with us in this one one six life journey, yeah, this is gonna be my last taping as a Reach Records employee, and I will be moving on from my position as the chief marketing officer at Reach Records. And I'm very excited about that. I'm also sad. And yeah, I'm so glad to be able to spend this this time right yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so so this is this is crazy, right? I feel like people are, are probably taken aback. And we had a really good talk on the last episode um about like work and life, which is kind of like a little bit of a setup. Yeah. A little alley to this episode and Maybe just share a little bit about how you're feeling right now, even saying that, because Reach has been part of your life for like, it's been nine, ten years? Yeah. Like, just how how you feel right now, knowing that you're essentially moving on to, to like, you know, another career path? Um, I have to say to, today is the second day in the last month hmm. that I've been able to wake up and feel... Let me find the word fully at peace. Mm. Most days when I've woken up, I've felt a number of things. I, I've been grieving, actually. Really? I've been grieving. I've been grieving. Yeah. What, what does grieving look like for you? Like, Well, you know, again, you said it, the amount of time that I've been here at Reach. What that represents for me in my life right. is this is the longest standing organized relationship I've ever had in my life. Wow. So that's a little bit of personal. I've been here for nine years. Wow. And growing up, I I used to get kicked out of school a lot. <laughs> As when I was young. I used to get I, kicked out of school. I feel like a I lot. just don't when I see you now, I don't see you I've heard these stories from you, bro, and I just there's like an other side to Marcus that I feel like it's just like wow. You know what I'm saying? Talk a little yeah. bit about why this relationship has been the longest one. Yeah, Ever. man. Like, what it, was that? That's, this shouldn't be the case, right? Like, yeah. Well, I mean, I think the reason being is because, like I said, I got when I was growing up, man. I I got kicked out of school a lot. I was always into trouble. Hmm. My parents uh, w- lived in different states, and so I would just I was getting into trouble a lot. And it would be okay, time for him to go here, time for him to go there, time for. So I spent a lot of time on Greyhound buses. Dang. I spent a lot of time. Dry on in the car, just traveling back and forth as uh, so you know that meant that uh, most of the time, I, I a lot of times I didn't finish the school year at the school I started with. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times I didn't come back. I think there was like maybe three years in my entire life where I where I like finished the school year and then stayed with the class Whoa. to go. Um, yeah, and so, then, so would you yeah. say like, would you say, it sounds like you're saying you had a lot of instability. I had a lot of instability growing up, yeah. And so, I mean, how did you cope with all that craziness, man? Music. That's the through line. Music. I would be, you know, to go from Kansas City to Kentucky, man, it's a, it's a, on the Greyhound. Yeah. It's a, it's like a 24 hour trip. Yo, how old were you during this time? Probably like, I mean, I was I was high school, like it's around high school. So 
between the the last couple years in high school, somewhere in between like junior high, but mainly mainly like freshman, sophomore, oh, so you, junior. You'd high be school. a fourteen year old kid riding a Greyhound bus with a bunch of people who yeah for twenty four hours. Yeah, that, that, that was a constant thing in your life. Yeah, for for a couple of years. So you yeah. you were just going. Why why were you going back and forth? What what was the reason? Well, like I said, my parents were in different oh, states, okay. and then I would sometimes it would be because I got in trouble. Oh. And then at other times it would be just because I would be like, ah, kind of, I ain't really feeling this setup. Or just like, hey, he needs his dad, he needs his mom, he needs his dad, he needs his mom, or I'm getting in trouble. So I think a lot of that would kind of have me on the move. And um, yeah, man, what got me through that was music. So I just remember I would be on them trips, man, and it would really just be me and my headphones, you know, listening to music and listening to artists telling their stories mm. i remember um the college dropout that record uh last call yeah by kanye man yeah. i felt like that was like the the trans the soundtrack mm. to my life Word. just how he would talk about leaving right. chicago going to new york like that really gave me some fuel because i was like man i'm wherever i'm about to go i'm gonna have to start completely over no friends right no nothing like right. Did completely different school, completely different state, completely different culture. So how am I like, hmm. I got to find some courage. I got to find something within myself because mm -hmm. literally I'm the only constant. Me and this music are the only, are the only constants. I mean, so speaking of college dropout, last call, you eventually got to college, right? Yeah. Like, so crazy story, man. And I share these stories simply to be a testimony. Yeah. I right? mean, this whole episode is like yeah, man. testimony time for real. So for real. my my uh senior year of high school, man, looked different from I think a lot of people's senior year in high school. I uh because I was kicked out a lot, most people would just have like a half day, all that. But me, nah man, I had to make up a lot of my grades were terrible and I just had a lot of missing classes because mm -hmm. I like one year I got kicked out of school, I sat at home for like a whole semester. And so all of that was just building up. So my senior year of high school, I was in, I would be in a full day of class. I was doing night school. I had like two jobs and I was doing like ACT classes so I could learn how to take the test to get into, so I could give myself a shot. Cause I was like, ain't no senior year come, ain't no all this back. Now, now you on your own. And so wow. my senior year, man, I pulled it together and man, just through God's grace, man, I, I got into college on like on probation because my grades were terrible, but I, I did well on tests. Oh. I graduated from high school like a 1.6. A 1.6 GPA, bro? Yeah, my grades were terrible. And you got into college with that. What college did you get into? KU, the university. They let you in there. They let me in. Yo, shout out KU. <laughs> Y'all the real ones. They let me in because of my ACT score. You must have aced that thing. I smashed it. So they they saw potential. So they and my essays and I had my, you know, uh, so they let but they let me in on probation. Like your Marcus, grades have to be at a if certain If you hadn't gotten the KU, what have what what would have been the outcome? Man, it's hard to tell because everybody that I knew, man, everybody that I knew growing up like that for real for real is like in jail or did some serious jail time and matter of fact it was one year when I was in transition my older brother you know came to me and was because because I was also some of the trouble I was getting into is because I was in the streets and my older brother came to me and was like bro you need to leave this stuff alone and you need to go back to school and then that was in the summer of 2017 26, 2016, 2017, the last conversation I had with my older brother was go back to school because this life that you live in, it ain't you. Hmm. It's not for you. December 2017, my brother and my friends, my brother and my closest friends, my brother got 12 years. Another one of our friends got six. Hmm. And our oldest friend, kind of like our OG, he got 60 years. 60, uh, Armed robbery. Gotcha. Boy, they threw the book at that boy. Oh yeah, sixty years. No, no, there was no homicide. Uh, there was a shooting, but nobody, no, there was no murder. No murder. Sixty years. Sixty years. Yo, this is why this show is so important. One one six life, because I think people see Marcus Hollinger, CMO, 
marketing savant, family man, understanding of the gospel, uh, Stanford educated design thinking executive. And they probably hear you say, I'm leaving the reach records to pursue other things, but they don't really, the backstory here is wild. Yeah. yeah that's that's not, that's not no, like those are real. You really, you ba- you made it out. Of, like you, you, you snuck out. Like you made it out alive, bro. Facts. So if I didn't end up in college, I mean, again, my closest, my friend group all ended up in prison. So, so you you're like a so God clearly had a hand. One hundred percent, one hundred percent, because it was in the middle of doing everything that I was doing. I remember, man, I had gotten into. I mean, man, I was I was gambling a lot. Like I I'd be out all night shooting dice, you know, selling drugs, and I said, and randomly I had a gun, and my mom kicked me out. And right before she kicked me out, I just remember, man, having this conversation with the Lord. And I was like, God, I know this is not my life. Mm. And it felt like it felt like there was like a, a, a trade going on for my soul because everything that the street, everything that the streets could offer, it was just being rolled out in front of me from drugs to gangs to even guns. Man, I had a gun bigger than me. and I didn't even know how to use it. But and I, and you know what I'm saying? It was like all this stuff was just coming at me. And I just remember being like, it's almost like sometimes you can just kind of see Satan. Like he'll just he'll be behind the scenes, but then you'll see him. And that's what I, I was like, oh, oh, I see. I see what's going on here. I'm being set up. Oh, you saw the play. I saw the play. God revealed it to me. God and somebody and somebody too had told me that summer that my brother told me, get out. And then there was this, this I can't remember who it was, but somebody was like, hey, Marcus, the place where you be at, doing what you be doing, they're watching you. And it may seem sweet for now, but one day they just going to come get you. Yo, so you need to stop. Shout out to all the theologian, dogmatic, Bible reading people, but God still speaks in the real time. Oh, yeah. Nah, that was Through a real people. Yeah. Yeah, because he clearly spoke to you through those circumstances. Oh yeah, yeah. Like yo, Marcus, you need to get. I think also it was dope. You know, obviously the one one six life is about faith, music, culture, and also uh, I I, am, I have a picture in my brain of you like fourteen years old, probably the same size you are now. Yeah, <laughs> so, yep. With some headphones on, so the music was therapeutic to kind of get you through those those tough times and tough. It travel. was my life, man. Like you know, it was. I remember. Um, I, I just identify so much with the music because I was incredibly young, but I was in those situations. Like I remember Jay Z in four 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 talked about like, man, you almost had to like learn how to read stuff that wasn't there. Like you almost had to learn how to like see around the corner because it's just stuff happening right. all the times. I mean, I've had I've had acts of violence committed against me. <clears throat> You know, I've done some things that I'm not proud of. And it was always the music that was like teaching me how to, you know, obviously because it's not coming from a Christian worldview, there are some things that, you know, I was doing Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have been doing. But this is where I'm drawing my influence from. And this is the life that I'm seeing. And thankfully, yeah, man, God called me, you know, around the time I was like 16, 17, he called me out of it practically. But there was another calling out of uh, we get that happened. That. There was another calling out of that happened after. Later. Yeah, out at later. Man, if y'all tuning in, uh, we're basically just walking through the Marcus Hollander story. Sounds like a um, <laughs> yeah, sounds like, like a, 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 a like, like, like a, it sounds like a Fifty Cent power play. Like it sounds like a movie, right? Yeah. Um, but the Marcus Hollander story brought to you by the One One Six Life here on Holy Culture Ro- Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel One Five Four. We're going to take a break and get back to you guys in a little bit. So, yeah. And so, welcome back, y'all. Yeah. It's the 116 Life, Holy Culture Radio Series, XM Channel 154. My name is Marcus. I'm, I'm one Ace of Harris. your hosts. I'm Ace Harris. Sorry for cutting you off. <laughs> well, I think, that's, I think that's proper because if you're just tuning in, this is a special episode. Yeah. Because it's my last episode. Yeah. As an employee at Reach Records. Yeah. I will be transitioning out. You're, tr- we're, you're, we're, you're launching out. You're I'm not- launching out. That's right. You're launching out. We're sending you out. You ain't yes, leaving. Yes, sir. That's yes, a sir. better way to frame yes, it. Yes, sir. Um, 
I just, I just we're, we're basically walking through Marcus's uh, upbringing and story. And I mean, this brother like is, is a is a walk in testimony of God's faithfulness, how he can use people and their stories to redeem culture and to redeem business oh, yeah. and music. And you were talking about I asked you a question like, yo, if you hadn't gotten into Kansas, how would your outcome be? And you mentioned you got most of your friend group that was with you doing the stuff you was doing. You was out here. Can I is it appropriate to say on the block? Or? Oh, yeah, I was definitely 100 percent. And those friends, they didn't make it out. Nah. That stuff almost gets me choked up just hearing, just like, society is so quick to cast and throw people away. And there's moments where God is like reaching into the gutter, basically. Oh, yeah. And trying to like save his, his children, man. I feel like you were one of those. Oh, yeah, definitely. You were 100%. like one of those. You were one of those. Tell me a more. Yeah, tell me a little bit about that and also walk us through how you got to Kansas. But how did, how did it feel? That had God had his hand on your life. How did that feel? Yeah, man. And I think I, I always want to point this back to as I talk about my story, man, I want this to be the story. It's really this is one of God's stories. Right. Because I remember, man, like I said, uh, Kendrick got this line about, you know, I've been stomped out in front of my mama. I seen commissary turn into commas. Mm. It's like, bro, that was my life. So. You know, I remember one day, man, I, I did have, when I was much younger, my grandmother and my aunt used to always make sure we went to church. Mm. And I prayed a prayer around the time I was like five or six, something like that. And I just remembered this presence that was always with mm. me. And now that I have consciousness of it, it was the Holy Spirit. So the Lord was with me through all of this. And I could even tell you about some situations I was in, bro, that I kid you not. You would say, man, you was 15 this little bitty old thing in that situation. And I'm like, yeah, because there was just always this supernatural presence that was with me that now I can see it was the Holy Spirit. But I just remember, man, um, I, I bring up that Kendrick line because that was me. I used to, I had, I always had multiple jobs. <laughs> jobs? So my brother, <laughs> yeah. my brother started getting locked up, man. And that whole commissary turned into commas thing. It was like, I was 15 years old putting money on my older brother's books through Western wow. Union. I was... You only talk about being stomped out in front of your mama like that happened to me. Like I would because the things that I was doing, you know, um, were catching up to me. And okay. so I just remember a couple of times I'd get off the bus from school. I'd come home from school and the streets was waiting on me. And it would be, you know, I, like I said, I've had acts of violence committed against me. I've been a part of some of those. I've been on the other side of that, too. And I just remember one day I was thinking to myself, I don't have to die to know what going to hell feels like. I'm already in it. Wow. Wow. And so, man, I just started crying out to the Lord, and I was like, "God, like, what age was this? What, what, what? I must. I was sixteen. This is right before your senior year, essentially. This was my. This was the yep, the summer before my senior year. But this before this before the switch happened, basically. This is before the switch happened. I just started crying out to the Lord. I was like, God, I know that this is when I was five or six, and I prayed that prayer, and I know that Your hand has been over my life, man. I've I done, I've been in crack houses by myself, just me. And I'm like, God, I should little bitty old thing. There's no reason I should be. You was you was like, slinging. yes, yes, I was. And oh. it's like, there's no reason I should be in this situation and just being able to just walk in and out of these places doing these things. But they would have, but you, they would have, bro. This would been over. I with. mean, you can you can just imagine the things that could have happened. Like I said, this was my crew. They they graduated from what we was doing into robberies, and I just remember being like, ah. Uh, I'm, I got my own little thing, and I don't really know about robberies, but that was the thing that got my crew in trouble, which had me, you know, and so I just cried out to the Lord. I was like, God, I can see what's going on. Please save me from this. You, you called out. You called, literally called. Literally called out. And for e every day for like a week or two, I was just crying out to the Lord, and I had gotten into a fight, so I was kicked out of school. My mom found <laughs> If my mom, if you see this, I'm sorry, but my mom found my gun and all this stuff like that. And she was like, you got to go. She was like, this is not, not here, bro. Yeah, you was like, you got to go. I got a whole nother kid in here. My brother's in prison. I'm doing all this. Oh, you had to write down his same She was like, you got to go. And I just remember, I, yeah, so I was out. You know, I was sleeping on my homeboy's couch. I would wake up and go to work and come back and I just it was like I just didn't know what was gonna happen so I cried out to the Lord I was living with my dad and I had gotten kicked out because there was some stuff going on they found some stuff in my locker so I got kicked out my he was, he was still essentially 
This was prior to. Okay. You were still distrib- you were distributing at that time. At school. And I got caught up, got kicked out, <laughs> sat at home for half the year, got sent to Kentucky, got kicked out. Jeez, bro. Long story short, the window opened. My dad was like, hey, I heard you out on the streets by yourself. Come up here. And my brother was like, go, because this ain't it. Get into KU. And like I said, music is a through line. Every which way I go, I'm just listening to this music. I get into KU and I'm like, man, I God answered my prayer. I got a second chance at life. Definitely. Like that, like. And so I get into school and I crush it. Ah, oh, I'm crushing it. I'm crushing it. I mean, grades on point. I didn't miss a single day of class, nothing. I mean, I was fighting for my life because I'm like, I know what I just left. And then I just remember I just got, I just hit a wall by my sophomore year. Uh-huh where I got super depressed and I got super anxious because I was like, wait a minute. I just came from doing all of that and all that hustle, all that ethic. I'm applying it in the classroom, but I don't feel any more fulfilled. I think what's, I'm going to pause and kind of sit on that. And this, this is where like listening to like a Jay-Z or hip hop. Yeah. It has some artistic therapy value to it. Yeah. But, if you you basically went from one hustle to another. Fact. That's exactly what it was. Cause I was hustling college, like the committees, the campaigns. Oh yeah, the you was that guy. You, you you had pledged out for that. Yeah, time? I was the sophomore year. I was the president of my chapter. I you was winning depressed. awards. I was on the road. I was doing it. I I started my own. I started my own business as a sophomore in college and was making money, putting all my friends on, like everything. But I was like super depressed because. Like I, I was still, I was, I felt like I was still running. It's like I now I'm now I'm not running from a jail cell. Now I'm not running from a grave. What am I running from? And what am I? What is the point of all of this? Like, what is the? Sure. I got the grades. I got the scholarships. I'm that guy on campus, but I don't feel fulfilled. And I just remember I sat at the edge of my bed. Now I was like, God. Now this is the second time we at this point. <laughs> round two. This, this is, is round two. The circumstances are a little bit different, but we back here. And I just remember I cried out to the Lord and I said, please get me out of this. If you're there, can you hear me now? Get me out of this. And lo and behold, one of my fraternity brothers, not too long after I prayed that prayer, was like, hey, man, how's your relationship with God? No way. Yep. And he was just like, man, this dude was like, he was in Alpha and he was a Christian and he just lived it. First time I ever seen somebody be a Christian and live it out. Long story short, he started discipling me. I would I would call him up two o'clock in the morning, can't write a paper because I'm anxious, this and that. And he'd point me to scripture and I would just start crying and just like mm. the whole thing. And it was like, now God, see, God had gotten me out of my circumstances. Right. But he hadn't quite gotten my circumstances mm-hmm. out of me. And at this Boy. point, it's, it was happening, man. And I finished school and I spent two years in campus ministry trying to give back what I had gotten by ministering to others on the campus. Yeah. And, and then long story short, I met Ben. I came to Atlanta on a service trip. Hold on, but th- th- when, when did you get a whole, speaking of, speaking of this narrative of music, Yeah. when did you first hear about Reach Records music? Yeah. Was it after your friend had started discipling you? Yeah. Yeah. So my boy, he was like, man, let me put you on to this Christian. Let me tell you about this dude, Lecrae, man. He the greatest rapper ever. I was like, what? Nah. But he was on, like, he was like, nah, he's the greatest rapper ever. And I was like, I don't get it. I don't get it. Because I'm coming from what I'm coming from. I was like, I don't get it. But then the more I went into the lifestyle, I was like, oh, I see why he's saying what he's saying. Right. Because, bro, there would be days I couldn't get out of bed because I was so like, man, I don't, it's like I had to learn how to walk again, yeah. going from one hustle to another hustle to surrendering. Yeah. It's like, I don't know how to live a surrendered life before yeah. God, but I would put on that rehab album and boy, oh boy, boom, Craig, boom, if you boom, cut boom, that boom, album for boom, one boom, person, boom. it was me. Boy, because I used to get I used to, man, I, I, I had to play that every day to get out of bed. And it was like everything just started making sense. And then I remember I came across Andy's uh, Formerly Known. Yeah, I thought that joint was a banger. And bro. I was like, all right. Yeah, they gave you the hip hop. It gave me the crate. What, what, what rehab did was it, 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 it helped me fully transition. OK. 
Okay. And then when I when I came, when I saw formerly known, I saw a redemptive vision of how I was wired. How Andy would just bring the flavor and right. the everything, but it was pointed toward God. I was like, oh, okay. Now I can fully like I, I became a Christian. I was born again. But then it was like, oh, this is how I can walk. Walk, right. He, and Andy's good at he, he does kind of give you more of a Okay, all right. You had you had your come to Jesus moment. This is how you walk it out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying that, that was yeah. So okay. that was it for me. So so you so you got that music. You graduated. What was your plan? I know we probably can. It might take a little longer than we have time for. But you graduated. You were you. I think you mentioned you were like getting courted by like every major advertising oh, yeah, company yep, in the yep. world. So I got radically saved, and then I had this internship in New York because that was my. I was in advertising. Went out, crushed it, but it was just this different flow about me. I'm a sold out Christian at this point. So I'm like doing this thing and I'm like every advertising agency and man, my account was killer. I'm crushing it to the point where at the end of the summer, they took me to a Yankees game. They was buying me all this stuff. They was like, yo, you're a New Yorker. You're a Yankee. You coming back, right? You was a first round draft pick out here. That's how they was treating me. I would get calls like, yo, we want to fly you out to San Francisco and fly you out to here and here. And the whole time I'm like, my God had already claimed my heart. So I was like, I need, I'm going into ministry. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, this career that I had built up for myself, it was time to lay it down because I had a call from Jesus to go into ministry. And it hurt. I was heartbroken because I had always dreamed of well, no, once I found out what advertising was, I yeah. was like, oh, yeah. And then, you know, I'm listening to all this hip hop. <laughs> right. I'm like, New York, like, that's yeah. the biggest thing. Yeah, it's York time marketing. for me to go. That's the epicenter of everything. Yeah. You, you would have been on top of the world, bro. Uh, and, uh, in some senses, but God just gave me a vision, man, of like, but yeah. that ain't it. That's not going to fulfill you. Right. You'd have been like probably how you felt at that sophomore year of college, yep. probably. Yep. You'd have had it externally, yep. but internally, you probably have been grieving. Yep. So, so fast forward. You you're you go into ministry out of college full yep. time. Yep. And you're doing you're, you're like you're you're raising support. Tell me tell me about that and how do you get to Ben? I just wanna. All right, I had a 1994 Chevy Silverado stick shift, and I used to drive that thing from Kansas to Oklahoma to Hold Kentucky. On. Stick shift yep. from Kansas City to Oklahoma. Yep. You a crazy person. Yep. I'm sorry. Chevy Silverado. Me. It's a pickup. I'm driving this thing, man. I'm raising support, and um. I read this, but also in my spare time, I'm like, anything art and faith, I'm just devouring it. Books, articles, everything. I come across this article that Wado wrote, and it and it mentioned Ben Washer. And it just so happened that the ministry that I was at, they knew Ben and Lecrae through uh, some business stuff. And so I found that out. I don't know how. And I was like, hey, we were getting ready to go on this uh, service trip to Atlanta to work at the Dream Center where Scott Free and them is at. And I was like, hey, when we go, I want to meet this guy, Ben Washer. And me and Ben, Ben agrees to meet with this random guy. We sit down and have breakfast. He, and the conversation is going so well. He's like, we got to keep this going. Once you get in the car with me, come to the studio. Get in the car, go to the studio. Lecrae's there. Katie's there. Mm -hmm. Everybody's there. And we rap. And I'm thinking, okay, cool. Now I'm inspired. So I'm going to go back and do ministry with all this energy I get a call and they're like, hey man, they asked if you could go down there with hmm. them and we said yes. So you need to pack your stuff up and be ready to go to Atlanta in two weeks because we told them yes. They they called, they basically tell you to come work, work yep. at Reach. Yep, they to come intern. That's crazy. I, 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 I think we could put a pin on it right there. Cause, <laughs> yeah. Because there's so much in, in the markets. Like this story is crazy. Shout out to DJ Wado yeah. for... And for people seeing a behind the scenes look at, that's why it's so important what we do, man. Yeah. There's there's a, there's clearly an Ace Harris, Marcus Hollinger out there, um, not to p puff ourselves up, nah. but that can hopefully be a reference point for people to feel like they can live out the one one six life, not necessarily in front of the stage, but from behind. Yeah. And also support the artists that do. So let's put a let's put a pause in that. This is a. Uh, the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 154. 
I'm your co-host, Ace Harris, with my main man, Marcus Hollinger. That's right. This, this, this is going to be a switcheroo going forward, but y'all stay tuned while we take a break and we can get into some more. Yeah. Let's get it. Welcome back to the 116 Life Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 154. I'm your co-host, Ace Harris, with my man, Marcus Hollinger. And we are straight in the middle of Marcus Hollinger's journey. I'm calling it or framing it the Marcus Hollinger story. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like either a Lifetime special or a 50 Cent uh, produced bio, bio, biopic. Whatever which way it is, it is definitely a movie, sorry, a, a life that's made for a movie because... You're not supposed to be sitting right here. Nah. You're supposed to be somewhere else in Kansas with your homies on the block. You're supposed to be, yeah, you 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 really are a testament to God's hand on people and how he can develop and craft stories that redeem his glory and give people a story to brag about him even more about. So, yeah, um, man. you mentioned that you had just met with Ben Washer. Y'all went out to eat. Um, um, an hour lunch turned into a three or four hour day. You went to the office and he's basically like, inspired it by you and he asked you to come work for reach record i mean that don't even for context that doesn't happen like that. <laughs> that yeah ben, it doesn't it doesn't really ben is not with as gracious as he, it doesn't happen like that he's not that kind of leader where he's just gonna like take a chance on people that quickly and so you're just a unique story bro to even be here so talk about how to feel like to get that call and what did you do how did you get here and yeah, talk about that a little bit. I mean, I think the first thing I did was I cried my eyes out because mm. the ministry that I built and what I was doing there in Kansas, I didn't imagine that I would be called out of it. And God was doing something amazing. Man, I saw God do some incredible things. I saw people go from not knowing Jesus to knowing Jesus and walking with him. Mm. And if you ain't never seen that in your life as a Christian, man, you are missing out. Like it was like, man, I was like a I was I was delivering babies. It's amazing, bro. Like it was amazing. And then it but but it just felt like, okay, Lord, if this is what you have next, then cause cause man, when I when I turned down those jobs, like I'm the first person in my family to graduate from college. And if wow. you knew me at that time, you knew what I went through and I actually graduated. Like, and I actually had opportunities. I remember it was the first time in my life that I heard my mom say she was disappointed. Wow. Because she envisioned this life of me, penthouse, sweeten it up. And she was like, what you mean? I was like, mom, I want to make disciples. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, what is that? Nah, I need you to make, I need, I need you to make some, some digits. <laughs> yeah, I need digits. I was like, ah, but mom, I want to make disciples. Nah, you, you, can, and, make, you um, can make them digits. You, you, can, you can disciple while you're making them digits, brother. But I told her a story. I was like, mama, imagine what happened in my life on this campus, right? I meet Jesus. I, my life gets completely transformed. Right. I had a little brother who was like four at that time. I was like, man, mama, if I spend this time doing this, who knows? But there could be people here that will be here when he gets here. And there will be somebody who can do for him what was done for me. And to me, that's way more important than going and chasing and building the career because I actually saw a vision mm -hmm. of the kingdom of God. It's like somebody told to me one day, they was like, picture two dogs running. And the first dog is running, is running, is running, and the second dog following behind. And then somewhere along the way, that second dog drops off, but the first dog keeps running. The reason that first dog kept running was because he saw what he was chasing. And the second dog was just, and I said, mm. man, when it comes to the kingdom of God, I feel like I'm that first dog. Like, yeah. I'm I'm chasing what I've seen. So it's not even a decision right. here. That's good, man. That's a, that's a great analogy. So you 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 come to reach as a marketing intern out of college. How does it feel when you're here? Is it like, it, honestly, let's talk, let's talk about the office politics, right? Is it like, who's this, who's this kid coming up in this building that Ben um, poached out of like ministry and put into elevated you over certain people. How that like? What was the temperature like when you like became a reach record like intern or employee? Yeah, I mean, I definitely had to get it from the bottom. There's okay. no doubt about that because um, I was an intern. I didn't okay. go. It was I was out of college now for two years. Okay, so I was 23 and I had just raised sixty thousand dollars of personal support. Mm -hmm. So I was here because I had people back home that was sending a check and I would write them a newsletter. So it was like I I built a reputation in advertising, let it go. 
built a base of support in ministry, was getting ready to let it go to start over completely at the bottom. I wasn't getting paid when I first got here. Wow. And it and it wasn't nah, I wasn't I wasn't elevated over nobody. I was an intern. Dang. After having built How'd you provide for yourself? Like I said, I oh, built yeah. the I built the, the ministry support. support and my my supporters were okay with carrying me here. So, yeah. That's amazing though. Yeah, so, nah, God's people, man. So you I mean you come in 23 years old and this is like Right before, what time stamp? I'm trying to... This was Tadashi's Below Paradise. 2014, 2013. Yep. August 2014. Oh, this is right before Anomaly. Yep. So my first full project that I worked, that I actually got to put my fingerprints on, was Anomaly. As an intern? As a, Well, I went, I went full time in August. So I started working on... We started working on... We started working on Anomaly in about August... And then we prepared it for release for September. Right. So I saw the whole thing go from inception to, you know, and I was actually able to be a significant contributor. What, what, what did you talk about? What did you do on that project that you like, man, I put that Marcus Holland just saw us on that. What, what was the. I think I had. So I got hired as social media director okay. and I read this book during my internship, Gary V's Jab, 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 Right Hook. And I, I found a play. And it was about how to treat social media like a give, 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 ask. And I used to always try to bake that into, so I was make I would, with Tadashi, I was like making content, tinkering, doing whatever. And what I started to do was approach rollouts. I used to approach rollouts from like a social media perspective. And uh, I think it was just like the 360 campaign mindset was something I was able to contribute to. Right. And sort of message Qu- development stuff like question, that. Question: Who, who, if it, if it wasn't your idea, no, no, no issue. Who created the Sharpie? Sent a message. Like, what, where did that come from? Alex Medina. That was that was pretty. Yeah, Alex Medina. I think it was like, but it was like a think tank type type thing. Y'all kind of ideated it because I remember before I started, Ben took me to Nuevo Laredo. Yeah, and he told me, "Hey, man." We, I want the best ideas to surface. So the only thing, what I want you to do when you come in here is speak your mind because it's about the best ideas surfacing. And that cut me. I was so blind to any politics or anything like that because that's what Ben told me. So that's why I was like, well, that's what I'm going to do. And so while that idea wasn't mine, but I had been able to uh, contribute to the, the environment, environment and to the conversation that, I you mean, know. For some of y'all that don't know Marcus... He pretty much does that all the time in these build. I mean, he's a ideation cultivator. What I mean by that is he's he spar he spurs he basically prompts people to keep thinking and keep thinking and go further to stretch to imagine and that is when the best ideas do come. And I think that's even a little bit about your gifting that is kind of inspiring you to kind of transition on a little bit. And and I know your time at Reach was like. It was historic. I'm just, it was historic. Like what you did here, historic, man. I want you to list like, if you can rank like one to three specific moments as marketing head at Reach that you can kind of just speak to, walk us through, and then we'll kind of land the plan with like what's next for you, man. When Lecrae was signed to Columbia and we were touring around New York, we go to the Rock Nation building. For those of you who don't know, that's Jay-Z's bit deal get in the elevator get up to the floor and i see this guy and i have no idea oh no jason capanna who's over artist relations at title he's like yo that's um that's emory jones i was like no way he said yeah that's emory jones i said all right all right cool i go over i say yo emory bro you're one of my heroes and emory he's looking at me like how you even know who i am and i'm like because bro I've been listening to, I listen to a lot of Jay's music and the relationship that you and him have, how he would write you letters and talk about y'all's letters in the music. That's the relationship that I had with my brother mm. who, who is getting out this year. Mm. So thanks to y'all's journey, it's inspired me to keep up with my brother and to take care of him and to encourage him. And that turned into a solid relationship with Tidal. And I haven't been involved in that for a long time. But that was something where I could always pick up Jason and get in 
at mm. title because of that i don't run those relationships everything that happened with title probably has nothing to do with me mm. but that felt like mm. a me being me moment opened the door for something that could benefit reach records so that, that was one That's for sure crazy. all right give, give, give me give me give me another give me another one or two just like highlight moments that you felt like you had a hand in that really helped to- this show okay this show you know I, I wrote this show five years ago what yeah and I've written and rewritten, and I told Trig James, who who started Holy Culture, when we was talking about the show, it's oh yeah, I think we should do a show. I was like, I already got it, top to bottom, because I wrote it five years ago. I've just been waiting on God, because what I never wanted to do was was put myself first. I never wanted to to get into a position where I was in front of the camera. And that could potentially become more important than the service I was supposed to be doing to build a team and to mm. and to serve the artist. That's so so like telling, man, of how of how you carry yourself, man. I mean, I know you wrote it five years ago. Though. Wrote this show five years ago, and when the summer playlist happened, it was almost like a okay, now is an opportunity to execute this vision that yeah. I've had to really use storytelling yeah. and lifestyle content to show right what's actually going on over here with these people who love Jesus and love hip hop. Yeah. And so to see this show happen is one of the biggest things that it's like it it it, it when I think about my time here this show is one of those things it's like man there is nothing that was in my heart hmm. that didn't come out because this was in my heart five years ago. That's so good, man. And that's that's a good segue on like the one one six life. You know, faith, culture, and music. And to even expound on that, I feel like the one one six life is not limited to reach records. Yeah, we are here to like build up a generation, inspire people to see God and whatever they do, and to live out this mission in wherever context God has them in. So I think. It's encouraging to hear you embrace it, but also lead out from it. So talk to us, you know, just a little bit about where you're going next. Yeah. And how do you plan to carry this mantle forward and wherever you land? So the first place I plan on going is home. <laughs> and I say that because I've been here nine years, yeah. but in January of next year, I'll be married five years. And what this mission is, has meant to me this this is my family right let me say that like i said it's nine years the longest play prior to reese the longest i'd ever been in one place was five six years when i was in kansas and i went into ministry so nine years this is the longest i've ever been at mm -hmm. a place but i just i started a family about five years ago and as i've been wrestling with man i feel like there's a significant part of my heart that's not available to my family mm -hmm. it's this and as I wrestled with it, man, I just, the meaning of a man should leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife and the two should become one. This is, this is the, 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 I, y'all, I, I grew up here. Mm. And so I'm excited, man, to lay this mantle down. Right. To give the affection and all of that at home. And I want to be clear to say, it's not that there's anything wrong with reach or anything like that that's keeping me from being with my family, right. anything like that. It's more of there's just the way that I've related to this and what God has positioned me to do in this giving my all, giving everything, that now it's time to take that heart and fully apply it and fully see it at home. So that's the first place I'm going. Okay. And out of that, I have the opportunity to spend – my time looking in and out of businesses, um, okay. some, some large corporations, some large businesses doing some consulting. And um, I think I'll have the chance to stand up some other kingdom mm. minded uh, businesses uh, in the, in the future. That's so. dope, man. I, I think that's, that's yeah, man. We, we, we just, you know, as, as your brother, man, I, I appreciate you, man, for, uh, just your your touch point, your fingerprint on everything here, um, your wisdom, your leadership, and also your like amazing um, comedic commentary yeah. uh, in between releases, your hot takes. 
Yo, Marcus got some hot takes. That boy will let you know if your song is boo boo or not. And but but I feel like that <laughs> that energy inspires us to be better. So um, yeah, man, just blessings to you, man. The one one six life again is a place where we where we where we 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 uh you know we 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 bring people in, but we also send people out. Yeah. And I feel like you're a great uh, example of that. And so I think everybody that's that's tuning in is can feel the love and and just the sincerity of what you bring and uh shout out you man and I think I think that's it for today man yeah man and I just want to leave this last thought because throughout this journey when we think about calling and when we think about work and all those types of things we can find ourselves in some incredibly beautiful situations mm -hmm. and that's what I have found myself in here and I also want to add this that God's work it outlasts his workers. Mm. I am not reached records. Facts. And this work is going to continue and it's going to be even more beautiful. And I'm excited to see what God continues to do through this movement, through this music. And I'm going to be rooting it on and I'm going to be praising God for everything that comes out of this building. Man, I love it. Well, y'all heard it here first. Uh, the Marcus Hollinger story <laughs> here on the 116 Life, Holy Culture Radio, uh, Sirius Channel 154. I'm your host, Ace Harris. And this is uh, my dear friend Marcus Hollinger signing off. Catch y'all later. Peace.